Are you brave enough to pull back the curtain on the world's nastiest natural-born killers? It's time to line up the top 10 most wanted creatures on the planet as we count down to find the animal with the highest human hit rate. Discover the difference between the quick and the dead when dangerous animals are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places and extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. Some animals really are killers. Hollywood loves transforming these ordinary creatures into monsters from our worst nightmares. But just like the celluloid villains, real creatures sometimes do kill people. We're going to find out why and reveal which animals are the most deadly to humans. So you'd better watch your back. Because tonight, some might try to kill you. Our first contender starred in one of the most terrifying motion pictures ever made. Steven Spielberg's 1975 movie became the first film to make more than $100 million at the box office. And it changed the way we think about beaches forever. Cruising in to number 10 in the countdown is the star of Jaws. The Great White Shark. We're terrified of these gigantic predators, and with good reason. Around the world, sharks, led by species like the great white, kill an average of four people every year. So what makes the shark so deadly? One reason is hidden in its mouth. Our mouth has 32 teeth specialized for cutting and grinding, but a great white shark doesn't chew its food. It has 56 7 centimeter long teeth for cutting flesh. And to keep them sharp, the shark has seven rows of replacements waiting in line, giving it a mouthful of 392 razor sharp teeth. We'd need an extreme mouth to fit in all those teeth, and even bigger neck muscles to help power those jaws we'd be able to bite clean through bone with an estimated force that's eight times more than the average human bite. More than 140 kilograms per square centimeter. Scientists studying shark attacks off the coast of South Africa have discovered that great whites need every bit of power just to take out their favorite food. The shark launches a surprise attack, often from directly below their target. They ambush surface swimming seals at speeds in excess of 40 kilometers per hour. Great whites may strike their prey up to three times before feeding. It's thought that they're tasting their prey. They're looking for a meal rich in fat because it contains so much stored energy. A shark can survive for more than a month on just 27 kilograms of seal fat. Humans may not have as much fat as the seal, but sometimes we can move like one. Sharks have eyes that are 10 times more sensitive to light than our own, but sometimes they can get confused. The great white love of fatty food might explain why in 96% of the hits on humans, 
the shark only bites once. Could it be that our skinny bodies leave a bad taste in their mouths? Are we the shark equivalent of Brussels sprouts? If you can survive that first bite, and a surprising number of victims do, you may live to surf another day. So has our fear of sharks been blown out of proportion? In America, you're 200 times more likely to drown in the ocean than get killed by any shark. But despite the risks, some people want to spend as much time in the water as possible in both life and death. And it's not just people. Some pets will spend an eternity in the water. Just ask Sharon and Bob Benefield. Maggie was just absolutely awesome in the water. Uh, the thing she used to love to do with the children was just, uh, you couldn't, couldn't keep her out of the water. So when Maggie, their pet black Labrador, died, the Benefields decided that her ashes should be made into a permanent memorial. Eternal reefs make environmentally friendly tombstones by mixing the remains of a loved one into concrete casts. After personalizing the mold and curing the concrete in the sun, the memorial is ready for its final journey. Maggie's cast will become part of an artificial reef, which will form a new marine habitat in one of Maggie's favorite places. There are now over 200 eternal reefs in four states in America and they're designed to last for well over 500 years. The Benefields have even decided that when their time comes, they'll be joining Maggie to spend eternity with hundreds of other marine species. As people spend more time underwater, we're beginning to realize that the shark's reputation is worse than its bite. It may not be the mindless killer seen in Jaws. And although our next contender is no movie star, it's far more deadly than the shark, thanks to another truly terrifying bite. In Africa, people are used to living surrounded by killers. So it takes an extreme animal to cause 4,000 people to flee their villages in Malawi. They were scared away because in just seven days during 2003, one animal killed three people and severely injured another 16. It was the hyena. Hyenas sneak into number nine on our countdown because they take an average of up to 50 human lives every year. In the cold light of day, hyenas are not the cowardly scavengers we once thought they were. A study in the Kalahari found that 70% of their diet was composed of direct kills. A single spotted hyena can catch an adult wildebeest after chasing it five kilometers at speeds of up to 56 kilometers per hour. The massive jaws of a hyena are probably the strongest in relation to body size of any mammal. They need all that power to hunt down and chew up the five kilograms of food they eat every day. So what chance would humans have against a clan of animals that can easily outmuscle a lion? Most carnivores digestive tracts are short but the hyena has very long intestines. 
This means it can extract nutrients out of everything from bone to rotting flesh. Decaying carcasses are full of dangerous bacteria like cholera, botulism, and anthrax. But they're no problem for the hyena's cast iron stomach and super strong digestive juices. That's why hyenas are nature's sanitation workers. Humans have to employ other methods of getting rid of dangerous wastes. Most people simply flush potentially harmful bacteria away and think no more about it. Sewer pipes deep underground remove the waste products out of our lives. But there's a problem. The arteries of America's sanitation system are clogging up. American restaurants create nearly one and a half billion kilograms of cast off fats a year. In cities like New York, where wastewater and storm water mixes freely, most of this fat ends up down the drain pipe. But water and grease don't mix. The fat solidifies in the sewer pipes to create what city authorities call a municipal heart attack. Every year in New York's 10,000 kilometers of sewage pipes, over 5,000 fat-based backups have to be chiseled away. Ironically, the most notorious grease spot is in a section of Queens called Flushing. Perhaps the Department of Sanitation should think about employing a pack of hyenas. They'd thrive on a diet of fat and would love a sewer. In the wild, they regularly feast on dung. But don't be fooled by the hyena's disgusting table manners. This predator is definitely the countdown's most underrated killer. We're diving down the countdown of the most extreme killers on the planet to find a creature that really has a sting of death. Jellyfish float into number eight in the countdown because every year they claim more lives than sharks. Although most jellyfish are harmless, it's estimated that 55 people die annually from jellyfish stings. And the tentacle terror responsible for most of the carnage is the box jellyfish. In the warm waters of the tropics, these transparent creatures are almost impossible to spot. And although the box-like mantle of this jellyfish is safe to touch, it has weapons of mass destruction attached to its tentacles, which are covered in 4,000 million stinging cells. An adult with 60 tentacles harbors enough venom to kill more than 50 people. Each stinging cell is like a tiny harpoon that penetrates the skin of its prey. It takes just three thousandths of a second for a cell to unravel. Then, like a miniature hypodermic needle, it injects a powerful neurotoxin. The poison targets the central nervous system causing paralysis of not just the body, but the heart and lungs. Death by box jellyfish can come quickly. There's a story of a 38-year-old man from Townsville, Australia, who died just 10 minutes after being stung. Are you right, mate? Are you right, mate? Squeeze your hand if you can hear me. If you're badly stung by a box jellyfish, you're going to need emergency medical treatment and injections of antivenom to bring you back to life. 
But have you ever wondered what happens if you have a brush with death? When I died, I floated up to the ceiling and then I went through this tunnel. I went into a tremendous place of peace, a place of great light. A sense of complete oneness, peace that I've longed for ever since. So many people have reported similar experiences when brought back to life that a team of researchers at the Rheinstadt Hospital in Holland started an investigation. They discovered that 20% of cardiac arrest patients reported experiencing sensations long after their brain ceased showing signs of activity. One patient in the study displayed a remarkable out-of-body experience. The man had collapsed while out walking and arrived at the hospital with no heart or brain function. He was brought back to life by a team of emergency doctors. When he woke in the hospital after a week-long coma, he identified all the medical staff who had helped to revive him and even recalled where they had placed his false teeth. As yet, science has no answers to explain what happens in these cases where the brain has clinically stopped functioning. And not surprisingly, few people are willing to volunteer for research studies, especially if it means being stung by a box jellyfish. These killers are such a menace that Australian authorities have installed nets on high-risk beaches. But you'll need more than a net to keep out our next cunning contender. So far, we've been stung by deadly jellies and chased by hordes of hyenas. But still to come, what animal hunts us down even when we think we're safe indoors? And what African hunters can kill you in the blink of an eye? Find out next on The Most Extreme. Our countdown of the most extreme killers in the natural world continues on the film set of the 1966 movie, Born Free. The movie was based on a true story of how George and Joy Adamson adopted and raised three orphaned lion cubs. It looked like fun and games, but behind the scenes, the crew were constantly breaking up cat fights between the two leading ladies, Virginia McKenna and Elsa the Lion. Even before filming started, Virginia's so-called tame lion broke her leg. It just shows how dangerous big cats can be. Every year around the world, big cats like lions, tigers, and leopards kill at least 80 people. They're specialized predators that have the size and the speed to take down animals at least three times their body weight. So killing a human would be easy. If you were as big and as strong as a lion, you'd have to bulk up with enough lean muscle to tip the scales at over 220 kilograms. You'd need a set of 7 centimeter long, razor sharp claws. And 10 centimeter fangs. 
A lion's bite has been measured at 70 kilograms per square centimeter, more than enough to shear through flesh and sinew. And you can't outrun the king of the beasts. It has a top speed of 80 kilometers per hour. Perhaps the most famous of all the killer cats lived back in 1898 in Savo, East Africa. Construction of a railway line was going according to schedule until they entered the realm of a pride of hungry lions. 29 laborers were killed in three months before work on the line was finally stopped. The railway company sent hunters to Savo to try to remove the lions, but the hunters soon became the hunted. Late one night, after the hunters had retired to the railroad cabin, the lions broke in to claim yet another victim. Don't think you're safe just because you're not living on the plains of Africa. It's estimated that some 15,000 exotic big cats are being kept in the United States alone, where tigers have killed at least nine people in the last five years. It just goes to show that big cats are great predators, but poor pets. Our search for the world's most extreme killers takes us to mainland Asia, where our next contender regularly raids farmers' crops. And when an invasion is imminent, the safest place to be is up in the trees. That's because stomping in to number six in the countdown is the elephant. It doesn't let anything get in the way of its jumbo-sized hunger pangs. In some parts of India, no matter what people throw at them, elephants raiding crops and stores can cause massive damage. Some males carry out 50 raids a year and can eat a quarter of a ton of grain each time. Trying to stop these massive animals can be bad for your health. Elephants throwing their weight around kill an average of 300 people every year. But it's the bulls that are responsible for 80% of all deaths. To find out why, you just have to take a close look at a gland between their eye and ear. Two or three times a year, the bull's testosterone levels skyrocket, and the gland dribbles a rancid-smelling secretion. The bull is in must a Hindi word that means intoxicated. That's because bull elephants under the influence of extra testosterone are more than a little disorderly. As anyone who works with elephants will tell you, it pays to keep your distance when a bull's in must, because he's armed with tusks that can grow more than two meters long. This man was lucky to escape with his life when a bull in must skewered him through his abdomen. Too much testosterone might make elephants a little bit edgy, 
But there's also a period in every man's life when hormones can be a killer. Recent analysis by researchers at the University of Michigan showed that three men die for every woman during the years between adolescence and adulthood. Testosterone is apparently directly responsible for a rise in reckless behavior. Like all other primates, young males are just trying to convince females to mate with them. And sometimes this may mean doing things that are not great for personal survival, but will certainly catch a female's attention. Increased testosterone levels are also vital for love-struck elephants. It's the boost they need to fight against other sex-crazed males for the right to mate. Unfortunately, an elephant in must has been described as smelling like a thousand goats in a pen. Female elephants, on the other hand, find the awful odor a real turn-on. They interpret the pungent smell as a sign of a healthy, virile bull. It's just humans that would be well advised to keep their distance. So far, we've seen bull elephants in must, and wildebeest eat the dust. But still to come, we'll go swimming with a killer that can hold its breath for an hour. And what eight-legged monster kills with more than just its claws? Find out next on The Most Extreme. We're on the run from our next most extreme killer because the scorpion really is a giant cause of death. It's number five in the countdown because it kills up to 1,000 people every year. But strangely enough, it's not the really big scorpions you have to worry about. At the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County, educator Robert Spellman lets kids loose with the largest scorpion on the planet. This is the world famous emperor scorpion from Africa and like most scorpions, this animal has a stinger on its tail. Look at the size of that thing. Here's the rule in scorpions. The larger the claws, the less powerful the venom. To find really deadly scorpions, just travel to the Palm Desert in California, wait for night to fall, and shine an ultraviolet flashlight. No one is sure why scorpions glow under ultraviolet light, but we do know that these fat-tailed scorpions kill with their venomous stings. Usually they use their venom on other scorpions. Today in America, if you're stung, your chances of dying are remote thanks to good medical care. Your chances also improve if the scorpion has set its sting on stun, not kill. Instead of wasting venom on self-defense, the scorpion can inject a special pre-venom that causes extreme pain. It's a great deterrent and easier to manufacture than the complex cocktail of chemicals that make up the deadly true venom. Strangely enough, scientists have discovered that one of the chemicals in scorpion venom may be able to help people diagnosed with glioma, a debilitating form of brain cancer. A team of researchers from the University of Alabama have discovered a chemical compound in scorpion venom called chlorotoxin that actually hunts down cancer cells. The team are attempting to manufacture these chlorotoxins in the lab so that one day we'll have a treatment for lethal gliomas. Scorpion venom may soon help to save as many lives as it takes, 
but there's no cure for the bite of our next contender. You need to keep a close eye on this extreme predator. Stepping in to number four in the countdown is an ancient reptile that's changed very little in the last 60 million years. Of the 21 different species of crocodile that cruise the world's tropical rivers, only two, the Nile and the saltwater crocodile, will attack humans with enough regularity to be called man-eaters. Killer crocs take an average of over 1,000 lives annually in the world's tropical waters. Most attacks on humans have been when they're swimming, washing, or fording rivers, where the crocs are attracted by the disturbance. The attacks are so brutal, they regularly make headlines. Crocodiles have no trouble killing a human. They can grow up to seven meters long and weigh over 900 kilograms. And they're armed with incredible jaws. Imagine if we had jaws like a crocodile. A study in 2002 found that a saltwater crocodile nearly five meters long slammed its jaws shut with more than 1,700 kilograms of force the strongest bite yet measured. This would be like being hit by jaws that slam shut with the force of a small truck behind them. And since crocodile teeth are meant for holding, not chewing, crocs rip their prey apart by spinning at up to 100 revolutions per minute. They don't call this the death roll for nothing. Sometimes the crocodile will store its victim underwater. Once prey start decomposing, it gets a little easier to rip apart. A watery grave may not be everyone's ideal burial ground, but there are some people who have even stranger final resting places. Manufacturers in Nottinghamshire, England, decided to put some flair into dead-end designs, as David Crampton explains. I would never have thought um, a few years ago that we'd be making crazy coffins. David and his team make coffins that help celebrate an individual's life. Some coffins can take a few weeks to build, so it pays to plan ahead, just like Kevin and Gwen Newpegs. It may look like a narrow boat, but uh, it isn't actually a coffin. Uh, I do fit in, it's a tight squeeze, but I can fit in. Uh, let's just hope I don't grow anymore. I can't see no weirdness in it. Perhaps you'd prefer a dumpster or skip coffin. John Gratton Fisher certainly doesn't think it's weird. I spent my life with skips, so um, I'm going to end up in one. Most people find it hard to imagine ever being swallowed by a dumpster or a crocodile. But not all the killers in the countdown live in such far out places. Our countdown of the world's deadliest animals gets a little closer to home when we meet a monstrous insect with a reputation that's been blown completely out of proportion. And what poisonous reptile has struck down this doggy dummy? Find out next on The Most Extreme. Look out, a swarm of killers is invading America.
flying in to number three in the countdown are the bees. Africanized bees to be precise. The legendary killer bees swept into the United States in 1990. With them came hysteria and fear because everybody had heard that this strain of bees from Africa was ferocious. Since their accidental release in Brazil, they have killed 1,000 people. It can be difficult to distinguish between African bees and their European cousins unless you happen to stumble across a hive, according to Africanized bee removal specialist Derek Taylor. A European queen, when you upset her, will send between 20 and 30 attack bees, no, no matter how big the colony is, and they'll sting for a shorter distance. The Africanized queen will usually send around half the colony. So with these mammoth colonies like this, we can get anywhere between 10, 20, even 30,000 bees in the air at a time. There's enough venom in 1,000 stings to kill a human being, which is why people are keen to remove Africanized nests from their backyard. These bees are far more aggressive than their European cousins because back in Africa, there are far more animals hunting their honey. That's why they had to develop such extreme defense mechanisms to survive. But European bees can be just as deadly. More than two million Americans are allergic to bee venom. A single sting can kill in just five minutes. Bees are number three in the countdown because it's been estimated that their stings kill about 1,500 people around the world every year. And some victims are blissfully unaware that they're allergic to bee venom until it's too late. Often the cause of death is misdiagnosed as a heart attack or stroke. Sometimes determining the exact cause of death can be difficult, which is why a growing number of law enforcement agencies are hiring a new breed of investigator. This was the horse's stall. Here. Noreen Renner is a psychic detective. She claims to be able to reconstruct crime scenes using a technique called psychometry. I'm going to start by just touching uh, the bridle. Psychometry uh, uh, is touching an item and getting impressions from that item. I, I see images in my head. Uh, if we're doing a homicide, I'm usually seeing images of the bad guy, what he looks like. I see a face. I see an oval, oval face. Noreen translates her information to a police illustrator who draws an identikit picture based on her description. Glasses. The hair is a little bit back. It's going back. Noreen also claims to feel the pain associated with each crime. I would put him in my 40s, in his 40s. Put, put it in Psychic point. evidence may not be admissible in court, but it can give police and private investigators a new lead to follow when other parts of the investigation have drawn a blank. While one bee sting may be hard to detect, it's easy to see what happens when it calls for reinforcements but not even the terror associated with killer bees can compare to the fear and loathing we have for the next deadly animal in the countdown.
Our next extreme killer could be sliding into a neighborhood near you. Snakes are number two in the countdown because according to the World Health Organization, they kill an average of 40,000 people every year. And yet recent research suggests that snakes could be far more deadly if they wanted to. Researchers have discovered that snakes can consciously decide whether to inject venom or not because 25% of the bites tested were dry. Since venom is physiologically expensive to produce, Non-toxic bites coupled with good medical care may explain why in the United States less than one in every thousand venomous snake bites is fatal. But people are not the only things that are stuffed if they get bitten by a snake. Every year in America thousands of pets are treated for snake bite and now you can give them a fighting chance by attending a Red Cross pet first aid course. To turn your head on the side like this, you can see the chest rise right here. And you place your hand right here. It's estimated that around 20% of cats and dogs bitten by snakes will die. But by learning the basics of CPR and mouth-to-snout resuscitation, you increase your pet's chances of survival. The sad fact is that snakes needn't be such extreme killers. They're most lethal in countries where shoes are rare and medical care is poor. But still to come is an animal that puts the bite on people all around the world and kills not in the thousands, but millions. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the deadliest creatures in the world. Only one animal is a more extreme killing machine. It's number one, and it's coming up next on the most extreme. The most extreme killer on the planet is a serial slayer that murders millions of people every year. It's definitely public enemy number one with a most unusual criminal profile. Criminologists agree that if we were looking for a human serial killer, it's likely to be male, unmarried, and aged between 20 and 30 years old. The profile for our most extreme killer couldn't be more different. We're looking for an adult female. She's pregnant, and her appetite for blood will double her body size. Her weapons are like some kind of lethal Swiss army knife. There are blades for cutting, a hypodermic needle for injecting saliva, and a vacuum hose for sucking up blood. She'd be one scary femme fatale, if only she was more than a few millimeters long. Flying in to number one in the countdown is the female mosquito. According to the World Health Organization, every year she'll kill about 2.7 million people. But it's not premeditated murder. The female mosquito's just looking for a meal of blood to nourish her unborn children.
When a mosquito bites, she's using two sharp blades to cut into the flesh and pierce a blood vessel. Then, one hollow tube sucks up blood while the other injects saliva, which contains an anticoagulant to stop the blood from clotting. And this is where the problems start. Unfortunately, the saliva may also carry passengers, parasites that feed on the hemoglobin in our red blood cells. And the worst of them all is malaria. The first symptoms of malaria occur 10 days to four weeks after infection. They include fever, headaches, and nausea. Malaria is the biggest killer in human history, more deadly than all the world wars and famines combined. In World War II in the Vietnam War, more soldiers were put out of action by malaria than by bullets. Imagine how terrifying the disease must have been in the days before modern medicine. Ancient Rome was particularly hard hit by malaria. The Romans thought the disease was associated with a terrible goddess, a less than attractive old hag with a protuberant stomach and swollen spleen of a chronic malaria sufferer. Although the Romans didn't link mosquitoes to malaria, they did connect the disease to swamps and marshy ground where the mosquitoes breed. They thought it was stagnant air that caused malaria. In fact, the Roman words for bad air were mal and area. Today we know malaria is carried by mosquitoes, but it hasn't made getting rid of the disease any easier. And malaria is just one of more than 100 diseases carried by the mosquito. Two and a half billion people live in areas where mosquito-transmitted diseases are endemic. They have good reason to be afraid of this tiny killer, especially since numbers of pesticide-resistant mosquitoes are steadily increasing. No wonder then, that of all the deadly animals in the world, the mosquito really is the most extreme.